Welcome back. The University of Washington is part of a clinical trial that could give hope for heart failure patients who are too sick for surgery. Grim 2's Rose Belts has the story of a twist man who was the first patient on the West Coast to undergo this experimental procedure. It's nice to have full breath. Yeah. This spring, but last year was something completely different for 74-year-old Edward Ward. I was uh, heavier, <laughs> full of water, but uh, it creeped up on me so slow. It was so gradual, I just really didn't understand what was going on, you know, it was so gradual. And then when it hit me, it let me know that it was there. He couldn't walk very far or perform very simple tasks without experiencing shortness of breath and fatigue. Normally I work hard around there in the summertime, you know, in yards and lawn digging this, that, and the other, because we live on the river there and I got lots of lawns and lots of landscaping and flowers and gardens. And Sounds beautiful. So I work in those, but I just couldn't do it last year. Just couldn't do it and then crashed and burned. He chalked it up to being a little out of shape and put off seeing his family doctor as long as he could. After that visit, he knew he could not wait to see a cardiologist. He says I'll be dead by then. Several rounds of tests later, Ward was diagnosed with heart failure and what he calls a leaky mitral valve. He was then referred to the structural heart team at the University of Washington. And it was serious. When he was referred to me back in the fall, he was having what we call class three, class four heart failure, meaning that he can only walk about 20 feet before he got short of breath, had to stop. So very limiting for him. And release. Because Ward was also diagnosed with functional mitral regurgitation, or FMR, a common but serious disease that occurs when the walls of the heart become enlarged to the point that it pulls apart and stretches the muscles and valves inside the heart. The condition causes blood to flow backwards and into the lungs. The lungs become congested with blood and fluid, causing severe breathing problems in patients. There is no cure for heart failure or FMR, and about half of the people who develop heart failure die within five years of diagnosis. Ward had no idea how much time he had left. I didn't sleep for three weeks. Why? Afraid to. Didn't think I'd wake up. But he did not give up. And just a month after an experimental, minimally invasive heart surgery, years have been added to his life. Hello, doctor. While the combination of his age and heart failure made him a high risk for conventional heart surgery, he was the perfect patient to participate in a national study. After we tuned him up medically, he was probably in a reasonable condition to be considered for surgery, but was still high risk. And, you know, and the, again, the problem with just fixing the valve without fixing the ventricular problem would not be solved with surgery alone. So the heart team at the University of Washington Medical Center offered him an alternative therapy called the AccuSynch procedure. Doctors threaded a catheter, a tube with a small opening through Ward's leg and into his heart, where a collar-like device designed with a cable and a series of anchors was implanted to treat the root cause of Ward's heart failure something a traditional valve surgery cannot accomplish alone, the first therapy of its kind. The cable connecting the anchors was then tightened to cinch the anchors together like a belt. This seemingly simple device is intended to strengthen and decrease the size of the heart, reduce symptoms, and improve the quality of life for patients. Doctors are happy with Ward's 30-day follow-up visit. Once we discovered a technology that was effective, we started realizing there are a lot of patients sitting in nursing homes or who are on hospice or who weren't, weren't even seeing a physician because they were told they had no options. And there are a lot of these patients who have come out of the woodwork, so to speak, uh, that we can offer a benefit to. Ward may be older, but he feels young at heart. I'm 70, going to be 75 years old, so I, uh, I guess you could say I'm up there. But, uh, you know, it's not so bad that I haven't got another five or ten in me at least, you know, so. And I feel too good to think that I'm over the hill, you know. I would never think that yet. But anyway, I'm having a, I'm having a good time with it because I feel so good. The procedure has been proven effective in animals, but doctors are still learning how the device behaves in humans. Dr. Don says they are just scratching the surface at this point, but within 10 years, procedures like this will be as commonplace as the cardiac stents that are used to treat patients with blocked arteries. 
Rose Belts, Crime 2 News. How amazing is that? Oh my goodness, pretty wild they can actually go in there and do that. Yeah. Hmm. The University of Washington Medical Center is currently enrolling new patients mm -hmm. and will evaluate anyone who they feel could benefit from participating in this study. So we will be posting more information on the clinical trial on our website. Just head to creme.com. Hmm.